My name is Mike Young and I've been asked to talk about water pricing, a horrible, boring topic. And I thought I'd start by reminding people of two things, which is a little bit surprising to come from me. But the first is that water is the heaviest commodity per cent you carry into the home or gets delivered. It comes in at a cost of about $3 a tonne. It's dirt cheap. It really is. It's a lot cheaper than sand. I'm going to get some sand this weekend into my house and it's probably, probably going to cost me $50 a tonne to get it brought to my hands. So water is really heavy, which is a really important concept to think about. The second really important thing when you think about water pricing is that as you sell more and more of it, the costs go down per unit. So water businesses like to sell water and they like to sell lots of it and it's a big business. If you think about water as an economist and think about pricing, the first thing you think about is efficiency, but also as well as that, if you're running a business, you've got to recover the full fixed costs of running the business. So SA Water has rationally a fixed charge and it makes sense to do that. We can argue over the amount, but you do need to have a fixed amount. And that pays for the cost of connection, for the cost of all the dams, the cost of all the inspectors, meter readings, and all those sorts of things. The Second part is, as any economist will tell you, is you should charge and send a price signal so that people use the resource efficiently. And that really should be set at the greater of marginal cost and average cost. I won't go into the detail around that. But if you want to send a signal, any economist will tell you every single drop of water should be sold at whatever that price is. We don't have that in South Australia. Instead, we have what's called an increasing block tariff system, where there's the first charge, which is about $2.35 a kilolitre for the first 30 kilolitres you take. Then it goes up to by about a dollar to $3.36. And then for the really, if you use a lot of water, $3.63. Now, a lot of people have said that that makes sense and that's good and it's fair and all those things. But let you, let's query that and let's unpack it a little bit. Remember, first of all, it would be good to use water efficiently and send the signals. When you have these sorts of systems and the metering systems we have, you don't send those signals. Secondly, if you think about how many people live in a house, you realise the number of people varies up and down. You think about gardens and people doing that. You start asking, why would you try and address equity objectives, which is what we're really talking about, making sure that everybody can afford to have some water, using something that's worth $3 a tonne. If I want to give somebody $60 worth of benefit, I've got to get them to use 20 tonnes more than everybody else. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. And when you look at people like me who spend six months of the year overseas, I hardly use any water. So thank you to all the people of South Australia for subsidising my water because I need assistance. I'm one of the wealthier people in Adelaide, on average, very well paid professor. Um, and yet the system uses this very heavy commodity that's worth three bucks a ton to try and assist me. And these sorts of funny things go on all over the place. So behind the politics is something that's very irrational. If you want to assist people, if you want to identify people who are pensioners or people who are on low incomes, run a separate system to identify it. The business of SA Water should be in supplying and managing water resources. If people need assistance to pay their water bills, that should be done by some other department and definitely not done through a water charge. It makes no sense to do that. So the fundamental message that I would suggest is that the world, not just South Australia, but every South Australian going around the world should be advising people to charge the full cost of water and then to use other mechanisms to assist and provide financial assistance. That seems obvious, but it's something very, very few countries are prepared to do. The other part of what I would suggest as we think about water in South Australia is how do we bring in a much better charging system? At the moment, we have a standard charge for a water supply that SA Water does for all of the state. Whether water's taken in Sojourna, taken in, in Mount, Mount Gamble, wherever it's taken, it's the same charge. It doesn't make sense to do that. We should have water systems that charge full cost, 
and recognise the transport costs. And if you do that, then another really important thing opens up. You get opportunities for competition. You get people who can recycle water, who can capture water and go into competition with SA water. While we have this current framework of a fixed charge, the places where it would be really easy and most competitive for someone else to supply water, don't get a look in because SA water is taxing one place to subsidise another part. We need to have a competition and that requires a framework where an independent regulator, as we have like Escoza, is able to look at the retail price or charge for water. At the moment they're not allowed to do that. Under the plans the state's put in place, they're allowed to look at bulk water charges and things like that, but they are not allowed yet to look at urban water charges. I think it doesn't make any sense to hold back on that and to have an agreement that they start looking in the next few years and by about 2020, we might get serious discussion about what makes sense. So in summary, we need a review of that. We need a review which suggests and looks at why we have increasing block tariffs, why we don't have a single charge, why we don't supply assistance to everybody. And then the last part of the equation, why we have a thing called a sewage charge. If you look at sewage and look at the sewage charges and think through that carefully, you'd realise that sewage service provisions are essentially a fixed cost. So there should be a fixed charge for that. We don't do that. We instead have a charge on the value of your house. This is in fact a state land tax. It's nothing more than that. It's about, it's a secret backdoor land tax collected under the guise of sewage because everybody hates talking about sewage, it's nasty, dirty stuff, and that hides a very important source of revenue. As this state and all other states in, South, in Australia look at taxation and look at the way forward, I think the way forward is to argue openly about whether or not we need a land tax. I tend to think it makes a good idea, but we should call it a land tax, not call it a sewage charge. So in summary, it's time now to be reviewing the pricing framework, driving one that allows competition driving towards one which sends a clear signal about value to everybody for every drop and opens South Australia up to competition. I'd give the same advice to any other country anywhere in the world. Charge properly, run an efficient system, allow competition and be proud of the fact that you supply a cheap surface to everybody on a very reliable basis. We're lucky our system is reliable. In closing, let me invite you all to come and ask questions at the, the Exe Water Industry Alliance function on Thursday the 28th of April. I look forward to seeing you there.